What's cooking guys? In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can fix skin tones in Premiere Pro with a couple easy tips. So for my example, I have a wedding I just shot and I'm to the point where I'm doing some color correcting and clearly you can see the skin tones are way off. They kind of look ghostly, a little bit of blue, kind of just pale, just very unsaturated. I just must have messed up my white balance or just done something wrong in my camera where I got this ghostly look on my couple's skin. So to fix that, it's actually pretty easy. So what we're going to start by doing is to make sure we're in our color correcting tab. To do that, you can just go over here and go to color. I'm already in mine. And then once you're in here, I do like to have my Lumetri scopes open. I have these two scopes open. This is the vector scope YUV and then waveform RGB to kind of see what colors I'm gaining or losing. So before I actually start touching the skin tone, I'm going to just color correct it a little bit. Looking at my graphs over here, I'm going to increase the whites until I'm kind of peeking at the top of that 100 just so I can kind of bring those whites up and do the same thing for the shadows kind of get down to this zero line bring down the shadows just a little bit and then I'm gonna jump up the highlights a little bit just because they're like I said a little pale and it's very dark and I'm not peeking at the top yet so I'm gonna keep it around there I'm not gonna really touch my contrast and that's looking pretty good and what I could always do is I could always come over to this white balance eyedropper and click it and I need to find true white so her dress is like pure white so I can click on her dress and it kind of adjusted some stuff for me it kind of added some of the orange on this side to kind of bring back some of that that color it was kind of blue um I don't like it that much I might pull it down maybe to 15 we'll start there just to kind of bring some of that color back still the skin doesn't look great and I could always bring my blacks down just a little bit I'm not peeking though like one looks good to me. I'm not gonna go super in depth to the color correction because that's not what this video is about. But if you want me to make a video on just full color correction, let me know down in the comments. So now to actually just touch the skin, where I'm gonna go is I'm gonna go into this HSL secondary. And from here, this is where I am going to be able to adjust just my skin tones. And to do that, I'm gonna start by coming over to this eyedropper, this first eyedropper, clicking that, and I'm going to just touch on, I don't really want to touch on his face because it's a little red and we could potentially fix that a little later on after we really touch the skin. I really want just like a, a normal skin color. So I'm going to choose her arm right here. And then you notice these kind of changed over here, but we don't really know what happened. Where this color gray is, I'm going to check that box. And now we can start to see that we're really starting to narrow down our skin. And to actually really narrow that down, we could start by hitting the plus eyedropper and clicking the white parts of her skin to kind of bring those back. And then I can start kind of clicking on his face, but his face, like I said, is a little red. So these flowers are gonna kind of pop. We could always mask around and take out those flowers later on, but it shouldn't really affect him too much, but we can decide if we wanna actually add a mask at the end. And if you do end up adding way too much, like you don't wanna include his face or the flowers, you could always hit this minus dropper and hit those flowers again and it'll take it away. But I'm just gonna keep it how it was. So I can do a couple more points, but in actuality, I think that's starting to look really good. So now we can actually start adjusting these lines. So for the first one, you can see if I pull it, I'm kind of increasing what I want to show and what I don't want to show. I'm gonna pull it a little more to try to get rid of that background a little bit. You can always grab it in the middle too and really adjust it side to side. I kind of really wanna keep their skin tones in it, but I don't want the background nearly as much. And then we can go down to our second line and fine tune that. I really don't want to get her hair in that much. So I'm going to pull this in a little bit. I can try to move it side to side, see what it looks like. That looks good. And then for this, move this side to side. Don't really want that skin tone. So I'm going to kind of pull it in a little bit. And then same with this arrow, fine tune it. And now I can finally see her skin tone. But now I kind of took away from his face. So I could always just bring that back. And I'm going to still have to deal with masking it out at the end because the flowers are going to pop up. Yeah, that's just, I just gotta have to deal with that and I'll just mask it out after there. Cause I do really want both of their skin tones out. So I'll start it with there and I might just come back and fine tune a little bit more. You don't have to be too, too perfect, but you do really wanna narrow down those skin. So now that we have our skin narrowed down, I can uncheck my color gray. And now we can really start trying to find that color for their skin. I can grab this center dot here and you can move it in any direction you want, depending on what color you want their skin to be. Maybe you want blue, go for it. Cool, you're cool, yeah, sure. No, let's not do that. Let's go to like red and, not red, cause I don't want it to be like bright red on their faces and whatever. I'm gonna go to like the middle of like yellow and orange. I'm maybe a little more on the yellow side. 
kind of just mess with it until I kind of get that skin tone back. And I always could come up to my check and see what it looked like before and now. Before, blue, white, washed out. And now I'm really starting to bring that color back. And I definitely want to up this a little bit more. See, her skin tone is looking really good. But now his is starting to look this like peachy red because his cheeks might have been red. I don't know. So, But I don't really want to have that really bright red. So what I could actually do is I can go into curves under hue and saturation, hit this eyedropper, and click it right on that red on his face. And then once I clicked on his face, it created these three points. Now I can kind of grab this point and I can pull it up and down. You can see I'm either increasing the red on his face or just completely pulling it out. But you can see I'm adjusting other skin tones, other parts of that red. So I don't really want to touch it that much, but I do want to touch it a little bit. So I kind of pull that red out of his face just a little bit. So it's not really adjusting too much of the other tones. It's just mainly adjusting that red on his face. You can always double check. This is what it was before. This was it after. So I think that's good. I'm going to minimize curves. Go back to HSL secondary. And I can kind of move this up even more now that I kind of minimize that red from his face. And now the red's not really popping up that much. So now I'm really starting to get the color that I want. I can say before. Oh yeah, definitely not good. And then now, that's actually looking really good. So I just kind of want to mess around just so I kind of get that skin tone how I want it. Kind of scroll through it just to make sure this is kind of looking how I want it to look. Yeah, this is definitely a lot better. And now we can do a little bit of fine tune adjustments by touching the denoise and blur. These are just kind of like feather settings. You can't really tell that much, but if you move it all the way, you can kind of see it kind of feathers it a little bit and makes it less harsh. So I like to move that a little bit in the middle and then the blur kind of blurs it out and really will give it that feather effect, but I don't really want to do that much. I'll probably put it around the same. And I think that's good. I'll do another before and after. Yeah, 100% better. And then lastly, I could always adjust the temperature, bring it up a lot if I really want their skin tones to glow. That's way too aggressive or put some blue back in, why not? No, that defeats the purpose. So I'm gonna put it at 10 just to give some more of that skin tone color. Yeah, that's good. I think that's where I wanna keep it. So now the last thing I'm gonna do is, clearly as you saw before and after, I'm not only changing their skin tones, but I am changing the background. And now the skin tones match the background and I don't want that. For cases like this where you have the same colors as their skin behind them, then you're going to change the background. In a lot of cases, you probably won't have the same colors behind them, so you won't really change the background. But in some cases, like mine, you will. So you probably want to mask them out. And that's very easy. Just go into our effects controls under our Lumetri. But before I do that, I actually want to go to the beginning of this clip. I'm going to hit the up arrow key all the way to the beginning of the clip. I have this kind of flash. I'll just mute that for now so we can see the beginning of our clip. I want to start my mask at the very beginning because I do have a moving image. So I want to kind of track them. In your case, you might not have a moving image, so you don't really have to go to the beginning and actually create some keyframes and mask points. You can just do it once around them and you're all set. But for me, I do have a moving image, so I'm going to have to create keyframes. So now let's complete this. And oh my God, already it looks so much better. I might create a points a little closer down so I don't really bring that background back. And then we'll turn it off before after oh my god that looks so much better because now the background is normal and now they are the only ones affected by this natural skin tone and it honestly actually makes them pop before it was very flat nothing really showed and then when i adjusted the skin tones it looked a lot better but now the background was the same color as them so it still made it kind of flat but now i just put a mask around them and they're the only ones that have the natural skin tone and they're glowing and that's exactly what i want so now that I have this, I'm going to start by just creating a mask point, make sure my mask is selected. And then I don't have to go frame by frame because I don't have that much movement and I don't need to be that precise because I am just gonna feather it, honestly. So I'll put the feather up to 50, who knows, whatever works for you. And then I'm just gonna go a little bit at a time, not, not frame by frame, like I said, but a little bit at a time to kind of bring in this mask a little bit, a little bit more. And now I'm getting to the point where they're going to be closing into each other. So I'm going to have to bring my mask points up and around their face. And now I can kind of pull this up, pull these other points up and around them. And then I can kind of pull this over a little bit and then bring these points all the way down. So I'm not touching that 
background that much. So all the way off and I'll just kind of follow that. I'll just move this a little to the side. And then at this point, it's basically the same. It's not really moving. So I'm just gonna pull it a little bit. I mean, it's not really affecting his jacket anyway, but I'll just pull that a little bit. Pull this in and down, follow that off. Maybe pull it down a little bit. Pull these out all the way to the end, moving back and forth. Like I said, doesn't need to be precise. And then they basically could just stand in the same place for the rest of the clip. In the end, your mask should look like something like this. There we go. And of course, I kind of messed up some of my keyframes early on, like right here. So I could always go in between keyframes, like this keyframe, using the go to previous keyframe and go to the next keyframe. And I could always mess with some of those points so I'm not touching that background. Go to next keyframe, do the same thing again. Just making those fine tune adjustments. Maybe bring some points in, go back a little bit more. And that's gonna go through the rest of my keyframes until I really feel like all my points are nice and accurate and fixed and I'm not really including that background. And then in the end, your mask points will look a lot better. It's just touching them. It's not really touching the background. You can just adjust any of the feather and other settings you need. And then in the end, you'll have something that looked like this and you'll turn it into something that looks like this. And I did adjust this guy's head. The mask was kind of in his head a little bit, but that's honestly fine because that is someone's head, the top of their head and they were bald. So that skin tone can affect that as well. So that really isn't that big of a problem. But if you, like I said, you could always adjust your points and kind of cut that out. And then I do also have this other kid that has skin tones that are not normal. So I could always just go off the same Lumetri color and then just create another mask around him. If I really, really wanted, pull that off. And then he will also be affected by this Lumetri color. And then you'll just have to create other keyframes onto him as they're moving, just like we did for the couple. So there you go. That's how you fix skin tones in Premiere Pro with a couple easy steps. Didn't take long at all, and it made a huge difference. If you like this video, make sure you like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can be kept up with all my other types of videos like this. And as always, if you want to leave something for me in the comments, let me know how I'm doing, or if you want me to do a different tutorial, let me know. Other than that, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Peace.